Hello and welcome to the session of learning. No one loves war and nobody likes to take part in a war because war always leaves destruction and casualties. If two nations can sit together to find a solution, that could save a lot of lives. And this idea has been reflected in the story, The Best Christmas Present in the World. But before I tell you more about the story, let me introduce you to the author. Sir Michael Mapurgo is an English book author, poet, playwright and lyricist. He is best known for children's work. He is well known for writing children's novels such as War Horse. He is noted for his magical storytelling. Mopogo became third children laureate from 2003 to 2005. Now let me tell you about the story that we are about to read. It is one of the Mopogo stories with the backdrop of World War I. Albeit, it is also about the special and emotional bond that is shared by the couple. In the story, the main character describes his experiences about the war at the war camp through a letter to his wife. What were those experiences and what was the best Christmas present? We will read and find in the story the best Christmas present in the world. Children, this story is divided into three parts. We will go through the three parts one by one. Before I take you to the reading part, let me ask you some questions. Are you ready? Okay, good. So, have you ever been to a junk shop? Okay, some say yes. And some say no. Those who said yes, tell me, what did you see at the junk shop? Okay, old things, used goods, okay, and antiques too. Well done. And those who said no are telling me that they have never been because they are used to buy things via online from different apps. That's also good. But whenever you get a chance, do visit a junk shop because it would be a different experience for you. All right? Do you like gifts? Yes? Okay. In fact, everyone does, right? So now tell me when do you have gifts? Okay, on your birthday, on festivals, on some special family functions too. Great. You know, children, there are some people who buy themselves a gift on some special occasions. And here the narrator too seemed to be in love of buying himself a gift. Now let's move to the reading part of the story. The Best Christmas Present in the World by Michael Mapurgo from your Honey to book. Now open the book to read and understand the text, okay? I spotted it in a junk shop in Bridgeport, a roll top desk. The man said it was early 19th century and oak. I had wanted one but they were far too expensive. This one was in a bad condition. The roll top in several pieces, one leg clumsily mended, scotch marks all down one side. It was going for very little money. I thought I could restore it. It would be a risk, a challenge, but I had to have it. I paid the man and brought it back to my workroom at the back of the carriage. I began work on it on Christmas Eve. I removed the roll top completely. 
and pulled down the drawers. The veneer had lifted almost everywhere. It looked like water damage to me. Both fire and water had clearly taken their toll on this desk. The last drawer was stuck fast. I tried all I could to ease it out gently. In the end, I used brute force. I struck it sharply with the side of my fist and the drawer flew open to reveal a shallow space underneath, a secret drawer. There was something in there. I reached in and took out a small black tin box. Salutate to the top of it was a piece of lined note paper and written on it in shaky handwriting. Jim's Last letter received January 25, 1915 to be buried with me when the time comes. I knew as I did it that it was wrong of me to open the box but curiosity got the better of my scruples. It usually does. Inside the box there was an envelope. The address read, Mrs. Jim McPherson, 12 Copper Beaches, Bridport, Dorset. I took out the letter and unfolded it. It was written in pencil and dated at the top, December 26, 1914. Children, what we have learned after going to the first part of the story, let's check. What happened in the year 1914 that made it to change the course of history? Your options are The First World War was started in this year The Second World War was ended in this year India got independence in this year Yes, very good The First World War was started in this year where was the junk shop? Your options are Sydney in Australia, Bridport in England, Paris in France. Absolutely correct. Bridport in England. Good. Our next question. What did the narrator find in a junk shop? What was it made up of? Your options are a roll top desk made up of oak, a chair made up of neem, an old bottle made up of glass. Yes, a roll top desk made up of oak. Good children. What was the problem with the roll top desk? Options are, it was clumsily mended and had scotch marks. It was damaged by termites. It was not taken by anyone for a long time. Yes, it was clumsily mended and had scotch marks. Good. Okay, our next question. On what occasion did the narrator start working on a roll top desk? Options are on Diwali Eve, on Christmas Eve, on New Year Eve. Tell me. Yes, on Christmas Eve. Good going. What did the narrator find in the secret drawer? Your options are a small black tin box which was salutate, a jewelry box which was wrapped with golden paper, a piggy bank. Now tell me which option is correct? Yes, option A, 
a small black tin box which was cello taped. What was written on the tin box? Options are Jim's first letter received on February 15, 1915. Jim's second letter received on March 25, 1914. Jim's last letter received January 25, 1915. Yes, Jim's last letter received January 25, 1915. Good job. What was there inside the tin box? Your options are an envelope with the name of Mrs. Jim McPherson, a packet with the name of Mrs. Tim Palubeski, a pouch with the name of Mrs. Tommy McPherson. Yes, an envelope with the name of Mrs. Jim McPherson. Good. Curiosity got better of my scruples. Why did the narrator say this? Your options are, because his morality of not opening the letter was defeated by his curiosity, because he was not in the mood of working on the roll-top desk, because he felt that he had made a mistake of buying a roll top desk. Yes, because his morality of not opening the letter was defeated by his curiosity. Very good. Now here we have a reference to context. Read and answer the following questions carefully. I removed the roll top completely and pulled out the drawers. The veneer had lifted almost everywhere. It looked like water damage to me. Both fire and water had clearly taken their toll on this desk. The last drawer was stuck fast. I tried all I could to ease it out gently. In the end, I used brute force. I struck it sharply with the side of my fist and the drawer flew open to reveal a shallow space underneath a secret drawer. Now here we have some questions. Answer these. Who is I in the above passage? Your options are the narrator, the shopkeeper, Mrs. Jim McPherson. Yay, the narrator. Very good. What does it denote in the above lines? A roll top desk, a water bottle, a lamp. Yes, rightly said. A roll top desk. Very good. Okay, now tell me, how was the desk damaged? Options are, it was damaged with a hammer. It was damaged with water and fire. It was damaged by the strong wind. Yes, it was damaged with water and fire. Good. Our next question. Where did he find the secret drawer? Options are underneath the top drawer, underneath the last drawer, underneath the middle drawer. Yes, underneath the last drawer. Very good. Now find the word that means the same for the given word. A thin layer of plastic or decorative wood on furniture. Find this. Yes, find this in the passage above. Very good. It's vineyard. Good job. 
children here is the end of our comprehension check for the first part of the story is it a good idea to read someone's letter think over it but here in the story the narrator unfolded the letter to know the contents of the letter catch me in the second part of the story till then stay happy and healthy bye bye